So hi, Joran. Hi, Ed. We are here on the Joran Analog booth. You've got a bunch of new stuff to show us, right? Uh, we do. So we have uh, three new modules um, coming um, by the end of the year in the next few months. We've also got uh, Delay 1, our uh, BBD module that was really um, highly anticipated, finally ready for release, very close to release anyway. And Pivot 2 as well, our variable signal router. Um, and what we show here this year is not just new modules, it's, it's not just modules we've already shown before, um, but it's also the, the, the concept of the, of the Drenalog system. It's a concept of truly patch programmable analog synthesis. And this year, I think we can finally say that we've got a, a true system that allows you to, uh, it's, it's just really exciting. <laughs> I'm, I'm just to being totally honest. It's super exciting to see what we, what we have to, to play with the system um, and the, the, the immediacy. Uh, we're so happy to be able to show to people that you can just patch something up with these modules and just go for it right away. No menu diving, no endless manuals to read, you know, no, no firmware to update. It's super immediate, super fun. And um, that's what we have. So we have uh, at the boot this year, we have three systems. Uh, anyone can come and play with our, uh, our East Coast monster. We've got uh, the big studio case that's uh, five rows of uh, purely analog goodness. Um, there's so much possibility in this one. It's, um, I think you'd be hard pressed to find any other modeler system in the world, honestly, that has this many. But we're, we're just scratching the surface. We, we built the system a few days ago and we're still discovering what, any, everything it can do. Um, and then on the left, we have a little performance system. So we also want people to show that even with a smaller, you know, just two rows, there's a lot you can do. Like, seriously, a lot you can do without needing any digital stuff in there. So we've got uh, a little patch going on here. Using a, a couple of our modules. But the, uh, the big star here is Route 4, and that's our latching signal router. That's uh, one of the new additions to the series. So what, uh, what is, uh, what is uh, Route 4 on the, doing? On the right we've got another one that's a little less patched up. So what, uh, what, what is it doing in this patch? And, yeah. uh, well, what the, the, the basic principle of Route 4 is that it's a, um, a 4 to 1. So we've got four routing inputs going into one output. And then on the bottom, the second section, is a 1 to 4 signal router. And both of these signal routers have uh, control inputs for each of the routing channels. So on the bottom, also four control inputs. So it's not a sequential switch because you know step eight is already a sequential switch. Uh, this is a true gated or latching switch. And the difference there is that uh, you have a switch on the module, a gate or latch switch, and that determines whether the module uh, responds to gates. So as long as the, as the signal is high on the control input, the routing channel goes active. Or you put it in latch mode, and then it will toggle on every rising edge of the control input. And you're not limited to just uh, you're mixing four to one and then sending one to up to four. There's also solo modes, and that will limit the maximum amount of uh, active channels to one. So only one active, uh, only one channel will be active. So the channels can take over from each other, basically. And that's a little bit more similar to a sequential switch, but not sequentially controlled. Because again, we have step eight for fulfilling that purpose in the, in the system. Um, in this patch, there's uh, quite a bit going on. We have step eight being used purely as a, as a counter. So not as a CV sequencer, we're just using the gate outputs. And these are all going into the uh, control inputs of Route 4. The, uh, 
the odd ones are going to the top section, the 4 to 1 router, and the bottom ones to the 1 to 4. But now I can play with these switches and you can hear the difference. So in gate mode we just have uh, gates controlling the signals directly. In latch they will toggle. Or we can mix them together in multi-modes. And the voltages going in, in this case, are just uh, fixed DC bias voltages coming from more 4. So essentially we've created a new kind of sequencer where you're taking four voltages and then uh, switching and, and routing between them to create a sequence instead of like you what you would normally do with a step sequencer, for example, step eight program, just a straight sequence. So it's very playable actually. On the bottom we have uh, the four outputs going to different uh, modulation destinations within the system. So we're not just modulating pitch, we're also modulating, for example, the filter cutoff in this patch. We're modulating delay time. Ah, we have some delay going on as well now. Let's see. So is this kind of a, a typical use for uh, Route 4 or, or do you see it being, yeah. it's obviously fairly open-ended, right? It's a very open-ended module and that's also common throughout our series. Uh, we really want, um, really want to share with people this idea of, of exploring these, these very versatile building blocks. So you could use it like this, um, but we also have um, a one volt normal on the routing inputs. So you can use it to octave shift uh, pitch CV, for example, or to mix together different sequences according to gates. Uh, it works at uh, it works for audio perfectly as well. So now we have CV going through it uh, to control a whole system. But with audio, you can switch between different audio sources, and you can do this at audio rates as well, because this is not a digital design. It's fully discrete, CMOS logic, super fast and you can switch between waveforms at audio rates. Uh, you can create new waveforms by taking parts of existing ones. And this is, this is something that's impossible with a lot of, of other options on the market today. So um, you've also got a few other uh, kind of modules, right? You've got this, uh, the dimmer yes. or dim2. We have a dim2 and that's a really fun one and I think also a useful one. It's a... Um, it's a dual BNC lamp module. So we've got, uh, in this case, we've got one lamp plugged in, we've got a dimmer, we've got a second channel going off to an LED strip on the back of the system. And this is not just, um, it's not just a static dimmer, it's voltage controlled as well, so we can play with these lights, so we've got an envelope going into the CV input and that's normal to both channels, but you can also separately control the two channels. So primarily it's a useful tool for anyone in a dark studio or on a dark stage, but it's also a lot of fun if you want to play with some lights, add some visual spectacle to your patches. DIM2 does it and it will be uh, supplied with two gooseneck lamps, um, not the ones we're showing here, these are just uh, you know, for, for use on Superboot. Uh, so we're actually looking into designing our own lamps to you know, get even that, you know, even that aspect to us is important to get best quality, um, which will allow you to patch in also LED strips using a standard DC barrel jack. So it's a, it's a fully integrated lighting solution for your Eurex system.
how how does the power is does it affect the power of the case? Do you need to have a fairly robust power source? Yeah, so you need uh, any power it draws comes from your power supply. So if you use the included gooseneck lamps, those are very low power. They're LED lamps, so no worries there. Uh, you could plug in halogen lamps. You could plug in like long LED strips. And then, yeah, it's going to draw more power. It's going to, you know, it can deliver up to 500 milliamps per channel. But of course, your, your power supply needs to have that, that grunt in it. So um, was there anything else apart from the, these, uh, the, the DIM and the, the Route 4? Was there, there was a couple of other things, yeah. right? You've got a couple more things to show. Uh, Bias 2. That's, um, it's a very small one, 2 HP, little tool fits in any system and it's very useful because uh, we've designed it to, to solve a common problem in EUREC and that's uh, the difference in voltage ranges between different modules, between different manufacturers. Uh, you've got uh, 0 to 5 volts on some inputs or outputs, 0 to 10, minus 5 to plus 5. And to convert between those, uh, you can use uh, different. You can use our Select 2. You can use modules from from other brands. But we were missing a super compact solution, like 2 HP solution. Uh, and on Bias 2, we've found exactly that. So we've got uh, a dual precision adders, and the second input on both of them have a voltage reference normalized. So a precision plus 5 volts, precision minus 5 volts on the bottom, uh, plus 5 volts on the top. And then each channel also has an uh, attenuated and an amplified output. So attenuated by 2 on top, amplified by 2 on bottom. And that's how you can, for example, using the amplification, you go from minus 5 uh, minus volts to plus 5 volts, you go to, uh, sorry, 0 to plus 5 volts, you go to 0 to plus 10 volts. Uh, by using, uh, by adding a 5 volt offset to a, a zero centered minus 5 to plus 5 from, from a VCO, for example, you can move it up to 0 to 10 volts. Uh, so, yeah, very useful addition. Also, if you just need a 5 volts, you know, you've got a module that just gives you a precision 5 volts right there. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's fun one. And we've got one last thing to show. This one is a bit special. This is the Geranalog cable. So uh, we've been coming to Superboot for years now, and we always bring our, uh, this is the, the old cable we used to bring. So um, we made this ourselves in the lab. Uh, the problem is that these are hand soldered. It's quite a bit of work, but people keep asking us about it. So we got to work. How can we make something even better and offer it at a reasonable price? And what we came up with is a cable that's truly engineered. So it's not just you know going to a manufacturer, asking to put our logo on a standard cable. Uh, we've actually specified and designed these aluminium barrels to make it extra sturdy. It's uh, overmolded inside the barrel, so we've got um, we've got this very thick it's it's rather thick but not too thick so it's still nice to patch very sturdy and the feel this is this is YouTube it's not feel of vision so you can't feel it but yeah and and the way the way it uh, it, it, it bends the the flexibility of it for makes us, you happy this is, for us this is the perfect cable perfect. and we hope for a lot of people as well we've we've this we've talked to a lot of people about what they like in cable what they don't like and I think we found something that can like, set a new standard in, in cable, which sounds maybe like something you might not be thinking about, but actually the cable you use to patch is quite important. Not just how it feels, not just how it looks, but also electrically we've, uh, we've made sure to have the best shielding, but also the lowest capacitance, so you can even use this on video signals. You're not going to get any degradation from these cables. Amazing. So when, uh, what's the kind of time scale on getting all of these new modules out? Are yeah. they kind of ready to go? What's the... They are, uh, well, we've got uh, a busy six months ahead of us uh, because we also have Delay 1, Pivot 2 from last year to release as well. This is coming very soon. Uh, so we've got uh, Pivot 2 in June, Bias 2, the, the little one, 
uh, and I should mention Pivot 2 pricing 160 euro, um, MSRP 160 dollar in the US. Um, I I don't know about the UK. I'm sorry. It just <laughs> keeps changing. So <laughs> um, you've got 75 euros uh, for bias 2 and coming in July, 75 dollars US. And that's uh, a nice addition next to Link2, our multiples, Add2, our Precision Adder, they're all 2 HP modules, so we're getting a nice little 2 HP series going, all for 75 uh, retail price, MSRP. Um, then we've got Delay1, our big BBD monster, and that's... I can't help myself, I still have to that you have a listen to it because we are so happy with how it sounds now. We spent a little bit more time tweaking the design um, and now we're pretty much ready for production and that's coming in August. Uh, retail price 350 euros, 350 dollars US. Um, after that we've got uh, Route 4 if I'm not mistaken. And that's a um, would be coming in September, 195 euro, 195 dollars. Um, October will then be uh, about DIM2, and this will be a fully fledged, ready to go lighting kit. So we're not just gonna offer the module, but also two high quality gooseneck LED lamps in a kit for 160 euros, 160 dollars and that's planned for October. So that's the plan the we have. The whole range, yeah. Amazing. One module per month. And for the cables, I should mention, uh, we don't have exact pricing availability yet, but definitely we want these in people's hands by the end of the year. Amazing. Well, Joran, thank you very much, and uh, we'll so see you next year. By. Cheers. See ya.